the way to reach nirvana, the basics of Buddhism. Buddhism, like Hinduism, grew out of the Vedic religious traditions. Both Hindus and Buddhists accept the law of karma, dharma, and a cycle of rebirth. Ahimsa, or nonviolence, was central to both religions. However, they differed over the roles, role of priests in the lives of believers, as the Hindu priests believed that only they could perform sacred rites to guarantee victory in battle, or that enough rain would fall, or any other important event in the lives of Hindus. Reformers disagreed, believing that there were other paths to truth. One of those reformers was Siddhartha Gautama, whose early life is mostly known through traditional stories. He was born into a high-ranking family around 563 BCE, with his mother dreaming that a white elephant descended from heaven, predicting that her son would become a holy man. Gautama's father was not interested in having his son be a priest, and so kept him in his family's palaces, surrounded by comfort and luxury. Gautama eventually married a beautiful woman, had a son, and enjoyed a beautiful life. Over the course of the next several days, Gautama decided to see what life was like beyond the walls of his palace, and for the first time saw an old person, a sick person, and a dead body. Suddenly, he became aware of the idea that people suffer. He was so upset with this that he said goodbye to his family and left the palace forever, leaving to discover the realm of life where there is neither suffering nor death. For years, Gautama wandered the countryside seeking answers from scholars and holy men, but received no satisfaction in their answers. Frustrated, Gautama fasted and meditated, eventually sitting under a giant bodhi tree, committed to meditating until he understood the mystery of life. According to legend, evil spirits tempted him to stop meditating and go back to his life of ease, but he ignored these temptations. Suddenly, he believed that he understood the cause of and cure for suffering and sorrow. When he rose, he was no longer Gautama, but had become the Buddha, or the Enlightened One. For the rest of his life, the Buddha worked to educate people about what he had learned. In his first sermon after becoming enlightened, he explained the four noble truths that became the heart of Buddhism. First, all life is full of suffering, pain, and sorrow. Second, the cause of suffering is rooted in evils such as greed, desire, and hatred. Third, the only cure for suffering is to overcome desire and other evils. And fourth, the way to overcome desire and other evils is to follow the Eightfold Path. The Eightfold Path are steps that people had to take in order to reach the ultimate goal of all Buddhists, which is nirvana, or a union with the universe and a release from the cycle of rebirth. The Buddha saw this as a middle way between a life devoted to pleasure and one based on harsh self-denial. It was a way to stress the moral principles of honesty, charity, and kindness to all living creatures. The steps on the path are right views, right aspirations, right speech, right conduct, right livelihood, right effort, right mindfulness, and right contemplation. The first two steps, right views and right aspirations, involved understanding the Four Noble Truths and committing oneself to the Eightfold Path. 
through the next four steps, right speech, right conduct, right livelihood, and right effort, a person learned to live a moral life, avoiding evil words and actions. Taking the last two steps, right mindfulness and right contemplation, allowed a person to achieve enlightenment through meditation and contemplation, just as the Buddha had. This would complete the Eightfold Path and allow the believer to achieve nirvana. As the Buddha's words and teachings spread across northern Italy, India, he attracted many disciples or followers. Many men and women set up monasteries and convents where they could meditate and study, some of these growing into major centers of learning. After his death, the Buddha's followers collected his teachings into a state sacred text called the Triptaka, or the Three Baskets of Wisdom. One of the baskets contains sayings that are similar to the Hindu emphasis on duty and a version of the Christian golden rule. As Buddhism spread to other parts of Asia, it declined in India. Hindus eventually absorbed some Buddhist ideas and made room for Buddha as a Hindu god. As Buddhism spread, it developed into two major schools, Theravadism Buddhism and Mahayana Buddhism. Even as Buddhism spread across most of Asia, it declined in India. Theravada Buddhism closely followed the teachings of the Buddha, requiring a life devoted to hard spiritual work. Only the most dedicated followers, such as monks and nuns, could hope to reach nirvana. This discipline spread to Sri Lanka and Southeast Asia. Mahayana Buddhism was easier for the average Buddhist to follow. Even though the Buddha had forbidden his followers to worship him, Mahayana Buddhists pictured him and other holy beings as compassionate gods. Buddhists turned to these gods for help in solving their daily problems as well as in achieving nirvana. Mahayana Buddhists describe the afterlife as a place filled with many heavens and hells, despite the fact that the Buddha had talked very little about nirvana as a specific place. Mahayana Buddhism spread to China, Tibet, Korea, and Japan. 